Let's start. Thank you everyone for joining today um, and a very warm welcome to day two of Automate UX Design with AI. This is our second day of the workshop and um, thanks all the members for joining here in the Zoom and also our viewers in the YouTube uh, who are watching us right now. Um, we'll move to the next slide. Today's uh, uh, we will start our session with the shout out. So we have 32 people who have completed the assignments. Prasad. <laughs> yeah, awesome. this is awesome, right? You guys are awesome. awesome. I'll just quickly shout out, uh, give a special shout out to all of you. I'll just read out your names. Lakman, Navin Kumar, Tanya, Prabhat, Apurva, Pranav, Vaibhavi, Vaibhav, Praneet, Saraswati, Fatima, Priyanka, Sakina, Astha, Tina, Rashmi, Hansashri, Misba, Pranav, Harshita, Sri Arti, Ajay, Sushita, Mohan Rao, Ashok, Pavan, Nehal, Simran, Ajinkya, Vaibhavi, Gedam, Achyut, and Venus. You guys are seriously awesome. This cool. has been a record, right, Prasad? Yeah, this is a record. <laughs> so I try not to, I do not take the risk of reading people's names because I tend to murder people's names. And then <laughs> really bad. So you are very brave. So, okay, let's go on to the next slide. So, so you want, I really want to acknowledge three people that have been driving this, right? These guys have been a part of our R&D team. They're members like you, who've, uh, you know, who are very interested in AI. And so the four of us have been collaborating very closely over the last few months, just exploring AI, what it is capable of doing, what are the problems, what are the opportunities? So Mukesh, Aruni, and Lakshmikan, are you guys here? Can you raise your virtual hand so everybody can see you? And then if you if you're here, Mukesh, Wait, I just saw Aruni. She hasn't raised her hand yet. Oh, yeah. I'm hey, still Mukesh. figuring out where is that gone. So, <laughs> awesome. So, but we can see you. The fact that you spoke up, you kind of jumped up. So, I think we can see you. So, thank you very much. And I know uh, Lakshmi Kant is probably out. But the, these three of them made all of this possible, right? So, they actually challenged us. They got this new knowledge. They basically said, how else can we do it? What is AI capable of doing? So they've done an absolutely phenomenal job. And what we are going to do is today, you're going to practice all of this. But for some of you that still have questions, next Friday, they're going to run a session where you can sit down with them and you can practice with them as well. Okay. So the ultimate goal is, you know, if you're here, you're going to learn. So don't worry about it. You know, just do um, as much as you can. And then there'll be more opportunities. So Mukesh, Aruni, and Lakshmikanth will be available next Friday as part of our Feedback Friday series, where you can go and practice with them. Okay. So thank you very much, guys. Really good job done. So let's go on to the next slide. Okay. So today we are going to talk about a basic concept, right? Automating design briefs, workflows, and wire wireframes. So 99% of our work will be only on chat GPT, and we'll be practicing how to use chat GPT. Now, does everybody have an account to chat GPT? Just say yes, so that we can start off. Just type in yes, so I can see how many yeses are there. Awesome. So if you do not have, I think it's a, the sign up process is fairly simple. Just type in chat GPT in Google. You'll get to the chat GPT page and then you can you know sign in and prompt for a, a creating a log up or what a login or whatever and then you can get into the system so that's what it is We're fairly straightforward good so let's go on to the next one so today we're going to do three challenges we're going to solve three challenges okay the first challenge is how to write a professional design brief now how many of you know what a design brief is or how many of you want clarification about what a design brief is 
Awesome. I have one person, Narsimha says, yes, need clarification. Awesome. Cool. So I will clarify on that. The next part is how to ideate on workflows, how to ideate on wireframes. Okay. So this is all ideation and I'm going to teach you this technique called contrarian ideation. Okay. So let's go on to the next slide. Okay. So our strategy always is this. The AI gives you ideas, you supervise and you give the creative energy into it and then you create magic, okay? So at every step of the way, the key question that you should be asking yourself and me, you feel free to challenge me. And by the way, we can open up the microphones for everybody. So because, you know, it's a, it's a nice group and we can just probably just unmute ourselves and speak. But if you feel like, okay, Prasad, I don't have a, you know, I don't know what is my contribution in this game, right? I'll be happy to answer. But always make sure that you understand what the AI is giving you and what you are giving and how you're creating the magic. That's the game here. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, how to create a design brief. Let's go to the next slide. So a design brief is a very simple thing, right? So a design brief is every time we go into meetings, okay? Or we talk in a service industry, let's say you're talking to your client, right? So there's always a lot of discussion done in terms of we need to do this, we need to do this, the feature should have that, the feature should have this. There's a lot of discussion around everything, okay? So the key question is, you know, a lot of times, in fact, most of the time what happens is we will take all of this. It's, it's kind of like project description, but there's something in addition to that, okay? So what happens then is there is a lot of decisions that are expected to be made. Okay, here's the project. This is the limit of the project. But now how long will it take for you to do it? right? What are the trade-offs? What, what should we prioritize? What should we not prioritize? Who are the people that are involved in that discussion, right? Who are the customers? So there's a lot of information that is there. And a lot of times what happens is when we don't summarize all that and we do it from memory, you know, our decisions are wrong, right? Or what happens is towards the end of the project, I don't know for those of you that are in the service industry, you might actually feel that when you get closer to the end of the project, you'll always have somebody say, but I said this. And you say, no, but I said this. So how many of you have gone into that situation where, you know, the client disagrees with what the agreement was? Anybody been in that situation? Yeah, so Praneet has been in that situation. Awesome. So this is a fairly common kind of a scenario where, yeah, Pooja has been there. Awesome. So this has been a fairly ph common phenomena. So what we need to be doing, the first step is documenting everything in a very clear and un unambiguous manner. Okay. So the simple thing is, here's the question. You just finished 30 minutes meeting with your client to set expectations for UX design project. And you want to create a comprehensive and clear documentation of the agreement in the direction. Okay. That is what a design brief is. You're basically creating a documentation that focuses on the agreements and the direction of the project. And if there's any timelines and stuff like that, that's what is in there. Okay. So the question for you and feel free to unmute yourself, right? The question for all of you is how will you automate this process without compromising on the quality? Anybody? What's your game plan? Yes, go ahead, Achit. Yeah, sir. So until now, what we have understood from the strategy of using the tool uh, until now, what I might do is probably uh, give a little input for the system, the, uh, mm -hmm. for chat GPT. Hmm. And then get a result and probably, you know, do a manual intervention. Like I'll get a framework of, uh, you know, things. And then again, once again, the strategy. So what input will you give? Because the meeting is over. Okay. Yeah. Are you just going to type in like, this is what I remember for the meeting now, generate my design brief. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah, actually I was thinking of that, but then, yeah, as you said, I might not, I might be missing out on very key. Yeah, because that's where the error is introduced because again, you're going back to memory, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's one step that you're missing, Achut. Think about that. Go ahead, Simran. Um, I probably, looking at the format we came across yesterday, right, with yeah. um, everything structured, probably yeah. have things documented in that way, throw it into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT for a MOM. And then huh. share the MOM with whoever was involved in the meeting. And so once but everyone... What happens, are you going to give the chat GPT? That's my question. So I love the idea. Yes, you're going to have an Excel sheet that's going to identify the top level items. But okay. what are you going to feed the chat GPT? What data are you going to give it? Um, so the thing is, I use Notion. And what happens when I bullet down points and Notion has an AI inbuilt into it. And if I highlight the points and ask AI 
an ocean's eight to summarize it summarizes it in a small uh, paragraph and okay, so, so, what, so okay so what is notion doing explain that to me it's it's taking all those points and some and sort of but where are the points the, coming from where are the from points me, i'm giving the input so you're typing it in yeah so that's so the same I, problem as the last as achut right it is still creating okay. the same error you, okay. what you remember is it's a memory fallacy right so whatever you're typing in is from memory so if you enter garbage you'll get garbage out if you forget something the ai will also forget it okay right okay go ahead venus so i will uh, take out so there's a lot of distortion in your voice venus we can't hear you okay so here's the awesome answer right so some people have already typed in their answers use something like otter.ai so what does otter.ai do achut uh yes sir actually recently i started using it uh, i'm yet to explore it fully what happens um, is it kind of uh, joins with you as an assistant into the meeting and it uh, starts taking down uh, the entire uh, script of what is going on and at the mm -hmm. end it also has the ability to summarize but one mm -hmm. thing that i have noticed with otter.ai is uh, something that all translator kind of uh, uh, or voice input taking uh, uh, technologies it usually tends to miss out on certain words that are indic in nature or i don't know how to put that i hope i conveyed what it is yeah yeah makes sense so there's like specific words it might miss out or misunderstand yes, or it is not as good something. when you change the language of communication while you're talking you might not yes. be able to pick up and it's not an indic problem it's a global problem right huh. i mean if i'm in spain i'm speaking in english and suddenly turn to spanish and okay. then go back to english it's going to be a problem however that's awesome that's a correct answer right so the first step we need to do right is we are transcribing the meeting okay so there are tools that are out there there's otter.ai there's firefly right there's a lot of tools that are available that will transcribe stuff for you okay in in some cases i think these tools are already built in so that's what you're going to do you're capturing the data then you're going to chat gpt and you're going to summarize and then you're going to generate the content okay that's what you're doing at each step you are verifying whether the quality is good or not so just like you know what was pointed out just now the output that you get from water.ai you're going to get a transcript you're going to read it and make sure the transcript makes sense okay and then if there's any confusion you might correct it and then move it across okay so simran says that water.ai work there as well so can you explain that simran no i was asking if uh, we didn't get sent through i was asking if it's an in person meeting Uh, huh. in a scenario like that what happens well, you can probably just record it there's nothing stopping you from doing that right so record and, and then send it into yeah there are transcription apps that you can put on your phone that you can transcribe voice to text okay. <clears throat> yeah okay. so you have these apps that are available and there's nothing stopping you from doing that so you can always say you know i'd like and we've been using it as researchers we've been using it for the longest time the transcription services because when we go and interview users you know we will have a microphone and a you know speech uh, you know a, a device that's recording everything and then you're bringing it back and transcribing it and adding it up and if nothing else even if you have an mp4 you can there are services online where you can upload the mp4 and then you can get the transcription out okay so there are all these tools that are available so that's what the idea is so go ahead venus you have a question or are you still uh, uh, okay cool thanks so this is what it is so what we are going to do for today's exercises i am going to take one transcript a sample transcript and i am going to run it and then in your whatsapp you will get a sample transcript okay so rajiv can you send the sample transcript to everybody so that they are they have it ready download it on your computers and have it ready and by the way you can for those of you that are wondering how do i move from mobile to desktop you can download it if you get into the desktop version of whatsapp okay all right so let's get going let's go to the next slide okay our strategy so at every point let's go to the next slide right okay so i think the intention of that slide was missed so at every point you're going to verify so what are the three steps rajiv that we discussed
when you supervise what are the things that need to be done so basically you are going to actually uh, uh, get ideas from ai then you are going to verify them if they are right or wrong and then you are going to actually uh, do uh, ideation on that one so that is uh, no okay. that's not right so so if you could just message and check up that will be great because i want the actual full steps on there okay so let's go to the demo awesome so what are we going to do what does a design brief require one it requires that we identify what problem are we solving okay the second thing is what is the outcome that is going to mean success how does everybody know what success is okay now the third part is what is the scope so what how much am i going to work or what are the elements that are what are the variables that i control to be able to get there what are the timelines and what is the final deliverable what are the artifacts that i'm going to deliver okay everybody clear with these five elements yes awesome good now let's go to our two okay so now the first thing we are going to do is let's go all take it away rajiv so again you are priming the system you are a note taker in a meeting so good so it's it's kind of getting that okay so then you are basically saying i'm going to give you a transcript now one of the most common things this is an error that we do when we go into ai is we basically give imagine you are a note taker here's the transcript now give me the summary okay you give a really big command so for those of you that are software programmers would you ever do that would you write a million lines of code and compile it no we never do that so what do we do we write small modules and compile each one individually to make sure it is working okay that's the same way you work with an ai you you take the problem break it down and compile it separately so that you know if there's an error you know where to catch it okay so now you are basically saying okay i'm going to give you a transcript tell me when you are ready for my questions good so it enter and then good so now the system is prop prime all right let's go to the next step and this is where the whole transcript is going to be copied and pasted okay now you have your transcript document you're going to copy and paste the same okay so are you guys doing it simultaneously are you just watching how many of you doing simultaneously anybody uh, doing simultaneously so we'll be giving the transcript uh, uh, as a challenge after the session is done no it would be good if we do it right now okay can you just give me 2 minutes i'll just share it on uh, college members whatsapp group so. yeah that's fine yeah because i know some members uh, some people just joined right now so i don't know if they are members uh, in your whatsapp group so rajiv is gone so we are kind of paused for a second actually uh, i'll share the link here itself give me a second okay cool it's going to be in the chat Hey Sharan, I see your name, but I don't see your face, man. What's going on? Okay, you're in transit. <laughs> there is someone called h in the meeting room i'm not sure who that is maybe hey, can you rename yourself h and if possible turn on the camera so that we can see you i just realized i can rename rename people <laughs> that's scary
Yeah, we have the. Okay, just give me, type your name here and I'll rename it for you. Uh, sorry, uh, can you please share the document? Yes, I'm going to do it. Okay, so you guys are going to get your own transcript. And now you have hey. all of this information. You, you can download the transcript from that link. Okay. So now I'll go ahead and hit enter here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to give you a couple of minutes to prime your AI and upload this data. Okay, so as soon as you're done, just raise your hand so that we know that you're done and then we can get going. So can we go back to the first command, please? So everybody can see what the first command is. And again, you know, my point is, you know, once you learn how to do this our way, feel free to explore. Maybe you have a better way to do it. Okay. Feel free to explore and try different ways of playing with it. But we've kind of done our own games and then we kind of figured out this is the set of commands that seem to work the most consistently. So first one is, please imagine you're a note taker in a meeting. Okay. The second one is, uh, I'll give you a transcript. Once you read it, I'll ask you a series of questions about the transcript. Tell me when you're ready for the questions. Okay. Then the third one, you're going to copy the whole transcript and you're going to put it in there and then you're going to say, okay, here's the transcript. You don't even have to say anything. You just put the transcript and get going. Okay. And Rajiv, you can probably copy and paste the commands as well uh, into our uh, chat box. So everybody can, uh, you know, so they don't have to retype everything. So you can just put it in there. All right. Now let's go on to the next one. So now that you have typed in the chat, so whenever we type a co command, a uh, in the in this box we'll type the we'll copy and paste the same thing in the chat so everybody has access to it all right so i'm assuming everybody is here right now are you all at this step yes no okay simran is there achut is there awesome so okay all right so let's go down rajiv let's get get to the next command Okay, so it says it's read and read the transcript. Okay, now let's go to the next next question. Okay, so what what does it say in our Excel? What is our first point? Goals, right? So what are the problems we are solving? So interestingly, when you are solving problems, you are identifying different types of customers, right? As part of the problem, and then you are saying for each of the customers, what are the user problem? What are the outcomes? So that's what you are doing here. So let's get to the next. So go ahead and type it in. So there you go. So you're basically setting up all of this information. Now let's go back to the command. So this is where all the users, it's identified four users that we discussed in the transcript, casual shoppers, Power users, can you scroll down? Casual shoppers, power shoppers, account holders, and site administrators. Okay, so this is what it is. So Rajiv, if you can copy and paste the command in the chat, that would be great. Yes, basically uh, there's a bug with Zoom, so I'm not able to- I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay, cool. Thank you, Hoy. Let's go up. So Hoy can copy and paste. Let's scroll up, please. Okay. So understand the syntax of the command I've given. Okay. So syntax is, it says identify the users uh, and 
for each of the identified users. So you are basically assuming that there are users there for each of the identified users. Define multiple of the following. So it's important to say multiple. Otherwise, chat GPT will say it will give you one problem and leave it at that. Multiple of the following from the brief, from your knowledge, right? So user problems, expected outcomes. So what is implicit is you're going to identify all your users anyways. Okay. Then the second part is you're defining the columns. So column one is user problems. Column two is expected outcomes. Okay. Now the third part, the third paragraph is interesting because you're saying Let's call this output UPEO. So it's like for those of you that are curious about when you do databases, right? This is the same thing as creating a stored procedure. Okay. It's very similar to that. So what you're basically telling the AI is whenever I ask for UPEO, you're going to give me this. Okay. So that's all you're doing. And so one important command, the last command that you're saying is you're telling the system not to assume anything. So in this information, if this information was not discussed, say not discussed, okay? Because the AI has a tendency to assume stuff and put stuff in, okay? So you want to make sure that it is not assuming anything, all right? But even then the AI will escape. I will show you some case studies if you're interested where the AI basically assumes stuff for the same problem, okay? So that is why you just want to very quickly eyeball it and make sure was this exactly what we discussed or is there something that was not discussed? Okay. And once it is done, you are okay with this. You're good to go. All right. So can you explain to me, Achut, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So what I learned is in uh, GPT models from uh, OpenAI, uh, mm -hmm. I started on a little bit on prompt engineering. So mm -hmm. actually it says that uh, temper, there is something called as a temperature value, which uh, uh -huh. whose range starts from zero to one. Uh -huh. So what happens is if you set the temperature value to zero, the answers are very straightforward. Like you are actually telling the GPT engine, how creative it wants to be, how creative it has okay. to be. So if, for awesome. example, so if so has tell us how to do that. So basically that happens when you are actually giving it a context. You give uh -huh. the context and you say that set your temperature value to so-and-so. If you want to do some poetry or some that kind of a thing, you go for, you know, beyond 0 0.5, 0 0.7 or something like that. But you, okay. you want a very straightforward answer. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming it's like very straightforward answer. Then you set your temperature value to very zero. For each okay. word, the kind of assumptions that GPT makes that will lessen with the temperature value. This is what Got I it. learned. Which is subject okay. to a lot of improvement, I have to say. Okay. So uh, let's let's actually keep that and then let's ask it towards the end because now I'm very curious about what you're saying. If there's setting like that, that's going to be awesome, right? Yeah. So let's keep it till the end and then let's test it out. Okay. So now is everybody done with this command? Does everybody have their problems and users listed out? Awesome. Cool. So now what we are going to do is this is the next command that we are going to give. Let's go back. And so by the way, let's go to our Excel sheet and see what all we have answered. So we've answered the problems. We have looked at the outcomes. We have defined both of these. Everybody agree? So Akash, can you show your screen so we can see what the output was? Uh, yeah, sure. Actually disabled. It's disabled. Yeah, it's going to be enabled soon. Sure. You must have answers. Okay. Um, where is this screenshot? Okay. Is my screen visible? Yeah. Yeah. So it Always. says restaurant owners and managers, restaurant staff members, customers. Like, I don't see like the user group doesn't match. Doesn't match to what? To what I just saw uh, on the screen. Yeah, that's because you got a different transcript. Your transcript is different from our transcript. Oh, oh okay. Okay, sorry. I thought okay. we are using the same transcript. No, no, no. You are getting your own stuff. So if you, you will get different answers because your transcript is almost... Uh, three or four times bigger than actually five times bigger than ours. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, got it. Okay. So sorry for the confusion. No, that's fine. I'm sure other people have the same doubt. So it's important to kind of just share it. Um, you know, so no worries. I think it's good. So again, my feedback is if you have a doubt or a question, just ask, we will stop and we will make sure your doubts are clarified. Okay. So now what we're trying to do is we're trying to list the scope. Okay. So the scope of the project in a tabular format with column one being title and column two being description. And let's call this scope. And then let's call this output scope. That is the stored procedure command where you're saying, okay, every time I say scope, you're going to give me this. And if this information is not discussed, mention not discussed. Cool. Go ahead and hit enter. So what the software is now doing is it's basically because there's no such thing that explicitly said scope, right? So it is basically saying it's looking at the deliverables and trying to figure out, well, here the, the, the deliverables are the scope. Okay. Which is okay. All right. Now, if we were doing it in-house, right? So if I was doing it, the way I would define a scope is as an experiences, right? So the login experience, the purchase experience, that's what I would focus on. So what I would do is I would put those experiences on top and say for the, each of these experiences, these are the sub bullet points. Okay. That's what I would modify it to. But in your case, you know, if you're just looking and most people do not think about scope that way, they just basically say these are the deliverables. And so that's what it is. Okay. Now let's go on to the next command. So let's, let's actually go back to the, our, our sheet and check off scope. Good. Now let's look at timelines. Okay. So now again, we are saying like, please list for, you know, the key timelines for each of the elements in the scope and define, you know, you're saying this is going to be called time. If this information was not discussed, uh, please mention not discussed. Okay. Go ahead and hit enter. Now, this is what I call the test, right? The way, because there's no, in within our transcript, there was no timeline that was discussed anywhere. Okay. So now when you notice it, yeah, that's great. So approval of final design, right? So it says site owner and the management team to approve the final design timeline not, not mentioned in the transcript. There you go. It's very, very clear. Right? Any questions or thoughts at this point? Okay. Why don't you guys run your commands and get to the same type step and say yes. Yeah, so the command has to be pasted in. Why have you pasted the command? I'm just so we have to do scope and timeline. There are two commands or two prompts. Yes. So that is the last one is artifacts. So don't do artifacts yet. Or is it? My bad. Don't don't put this command. I will uh, share one more. That's fine. If you if you already put the command, that's okay. It'll still work, right? Just the order is different. Yeah. So time first, and then the artifact. So here goes the time. Now, Achyut, I would actually be curious if you can open a new chat window and say set temperature to zero and then do the same commands, okay, without the last line. If this information was not discussed, mention not discussed, okay? Get rid of that. Sir, okay? I, and see I, if I, you're I, going to get the same output. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I was, I, I was uh, doing something. Can you just brief me on what you said again? Yeah. So, Achyut, what I'm saying is can you open another tab and say set the temperature to zero? And run the same set of commands without the last line, which is if this information was not discussed, then mention not discussed. And see if there's any difference. If you can tell us that, that would be great. 
so like the entire thing that we have done all the commands for all the commands yeah all the commands without the last line in any of the commands without uh, uh mentioning do not uh, not discussed thing right yeah without mentioning that run it so but set the temperature in the beginning yeah yeah i will set the temperature okay uh, and then you tell me if it works the same way it might take a little while is that okay like that's fine that's fine we have till the end of the session okay okay so everybody's done this type in yes if you're done and then we can get on to the next one any questions or doubts we can clarify right here awesome now let's go on to the next one so this is where we are listing out the key artifacts okay so now we're going to put the command for artifacts very similar we are basically saying column one being the number of uh, the serial number and then the second number is the artifact name that's all we are saying done so there are four key artifacts that are supposed to go out okay now let's just put the same command in the, you got the artifact command run it if you haven't already run it okay fairly straightforward now let's put the last command because the artifacts is done now we have to bring all of this together in one style which is readable and understandable right from the above i want you to create a document titled design brief the document will have the following sections goal list all product goals mentioned by the client users list all the user segments okay so then problems right remember we created the store procedure type ugo list ugo in tabular format scope list scope in tabular format list time in tabular format list arte in tabular format that's what it is okay so now because you have mentioned at each of the steps you have verified and it is good you believe it is correct now you get the final step and you are generating it in single shot right now let's go hit enter done right so the only thing that you have to do is all the commands that we gave you all you have to do is save them in some document and keep them safely okay the only thing that is different is the transcript you upload the transcript you give the same se sequences of commands copy and paste you are done right now every once in a while this is going to you know stop randomly so in which case you have to say please complete the document and it will complete the document all right so can you go back rajiv go back to the command and say please complete the document okay awesome so lukman is done so all you need need to do now is just copy and paste it into a document and it's ready to go Okay, so you can probably recall that and say, okay, print this, or you can copy and paste it from above, and that's fine. Your game is still good to go. All right. Any questions or thoughts so far? Everybody clear? Awesome. Now let's go back to the presentation. Okay. all right let's go next okay so now you're looking at the next step how do you create a workflow all right everybody ready for this just type in yes i just want to see everybody's faces because i think uh, whether it worked or not i don't know okay good okay so now what is a workflow okay let's go to the next slide so we need to understand what the important points are so 
workflows are primarily done it's an interaction design task okay go ahead actually sir sorry to interrupt actually i am trying to open it in another tab and trying to do both things at once i am not able to follow is it okay by the end i will try to you know because yeah, i yeah, yeah. It seems... yeah 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 so you focus on this if you yeah. have some time in the end just let me know whether the temperature worked or not yeah what i'll do is i'll just copy all the output make a document and probably send it so that uh, everyone is aware of that awesome cool thank you thanks man. okay so what you know when you come come to it workflows are generally done as part of the interaction design discipline okay what does an interaction design do and this is where this is the next level of complexity in the previous one we were only doing verification in this one you're going to do contrarian ideation as well okay so what you're going to do here is you're looking at what the interaction designer does the project manager will give all the requirements it comes to the interaction designer right the researcher gives the data right and the engine and whatever output goes it goes to the visual designer as well as engineering because the engineering kind of understands how many screens i need to make what is the complexity what is the back end i need to do at this level and all that's what the engineering is figuring it out at this point and then the visual designer what the visual designer is doing is they're going to take these wireframes and they're going to make it look good okay so the input for the interaction designer is the uh you know the project manager's requirements the researcher's data right and the output is a set of wireframes as well as an understanding of how many steps there are what is the complexity how should the back end engineering work okay everybody clear with this job requirement okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to experiment how to create a wireframe okay and this is probably one of the toughest tasks that in that a designer you know for somebody who's not trained they will find this task really tough but it's fairly simple okay so this is what a workflow looks like a workflow is like you know given a certain task you break the workflow into different steps okay and each one of those you're saying there's a home page there's a login sign up there's a health profile there's a doctor feedback and there is some kind of error that is going to happen you're correcting it okay and so essentially what is happening is you are identifying the scenario you're generating the workflow okay and so this workflow will tell you how the overall system works which screen should be designed and why so notice right underneath you see the description okay for every screen you will see a description underneath okay the description will say how does that system work okay and notice towards the bottom right hand corner there is a small little box that says er1 right so it is identifying what the errors are as well so you know on this page what are the errors and how are you going to correct it okay so this is literally like when if you are an architect you are doing the initial architecture of the whole place okay on paper and pen and that's what you are doing here okay everybody understand what this workflow is awesome so for this task what we are going to ask you to do is we will show you a task on our screen and we will copy and paste it into your chat box and so you are while we are doing this you are simultaneously also working with chat gpt on that okay ready thumbs up good okay let's go okay so this is the deal okay you are asked to create a workflow for a checkout experience okay the scenario is the product is not available in a user's locality so they visit an e-commerce site to find the product and buy it okay that is the basic scenario okay so how will you automate it without compromising on the quality questions ideas so let me ask you the question what is going to be your first prompt anybody have any suggestions for first prompt okay let's go on to the next one everything is chat gpt right you don't need to do anything else so you're doing chat gpt for the unique steps uh, you first identify the unique steps that are required then you're going to describe those unique steps and then you're going to ask for errors what are all the errors that are going to be possible okay and as a bonus you might also ask what are the opportunities that might come up on each of the screens 
Okay. So this is what it is. And pretty much chat GPT will do everything. And then what you're doing is you're going into Figma and you're copying and pasting the content into your uh, workflows. That's all there is. Okay. So let's go on to the next slide. Okay. Again, you give AI gives you ideas, you supervise the game and then you get the magic. Okay. But in this case, it is not just supervise, it's supervise and ideate. That is the next step that you're going to do. And I will teach you how to do the ideation as well. So let's go on to the next one. So let's go to Google Sheets. Okay. So what are all the things that we need to do? We have to identify the unique steps. We have to get a description. What is the problem we are solving? Okay. Then we have to figure out the errors, right? What are the possible errors that are going to have? And then once you have the possible errors, how do you recover from those errors? Okay. And then you're basically going to say, give me more details for each of the page. So that is optional. If you want to generate wireframes, that is optional. Okay. All right. So let us put in our first command. And again, for everybody, can we give them whatever commands we are entering? Uh, Joy, please paste them as we are entering them. Okay. Yes. All right. So open a new tab because the previous tab is designed for the previous task, not taking task. This, this is a new, new tab. Okay. So, or a new chat. And you're saying, imagine you're a UX designer and creating workflow for an e-commerce website. In a tabular format, please identify all unique steps a customer would need to take from the homepage to purchasing a product. Okay. So what you're doing is you're setting the context and you're explaining what a workflow is. So you're explaining because workflow might be a technical topic, whether they understand or not, we don't know. So it in, so the workflow implies what are all the unique steps? That's what it is. Okay. Give it to me in a tabular format with column one step name, column two CTA and the go used to go to the next step, which is column three description. Okay. Notice that here we are not saying if no data has been provided, nor say not, not, not discussed. We are not doing that because we are expecting chat GPT to extrapolate based on our data. Okay. Everybody okay with this? Let's go ahead and enter. Awesome. Now, this is what you would get. Everybody on the same page? Okay. Now there is a certain problem here. What's the problem? Can anybody verify and tell me if all of these steps are good? Go ahead, Punish. I think it forgot to like forgot to take address details, like where it has to be shipped or regarding that information. So it says under proceed to checkout. Here they will enter their billing and shipping information and choose a shipping. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a trick question. Overall, I think this was a decent enough job. Okay. So it's a, this is a trick question for you guys. I think chat GPT did a decent job on this. Okay. Now let's go on to the next one. So we have identified all the steps. Now, only problem I would say is how many pages are there? So let's actually look at how many pages are going to be there. Let's scroll up and let's count quickly. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So technically, this is where you're saying there's seven pages. Okay. This is where what you would do is you might actually say, you know, review and confirm order and payment order confirmation should be on the same page. It can be done on the same page. Okay. So you're actually merging both of those into the same, same, same page. So now you have six pages. Let's scroll up. And then you are seeing, okay, homepage is there. Browse the products is there. Select the product is there. So. So browse products is typically uh, integrated with home page. So it can be merged because yeah, it's not necessarily right. It could be a product listing page. So that's why I'm not, I'm okay with that. 
But however, I see there is one possible step that may be missing between select product and add to cart, right? Which is the view item page, isn't it? So you are going to look at the description of that item and you're going to say, okay, is this valid or not? Correct? Do you guys agree or no? Uh, yes, sir. product description. Yeah, so it's a, it's not select. You don't select the product. You go to another page, which is product details page. Right. So you say, I think you, can you please add view product details? Right. Add view product details as a step before selecting the product or before uh, adding the product to cart. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Now you have about eight, right? Awesome. So for Praneet, it already generated. Now this is an interesting thing, right? Where for Praneet it generated, for me it did not generate. And again, you know, you have to understand an AI is, you know, working randomly. It will, you know, traditional computers will give you the correct answer every time, right? Or will give you the same answer every time, not the correct, but the same answer every time. But when you're dealing with AI, you will get different answers depending on time of day, who's asking, what is happening, all that stuff. So the point is, you have to still do your verification. So now, are we comfortable with this description, guys? Are we good? Okay. So maybe we can say, can you please merge, review, and confirm the order with payment and order confirmation? Can you merge the review and confirm step with the payment and order step with the, with the order confirmation step? So what you're basically doing is you're just doing a quick verification. And then also add serial number as, as the first column. Maybe that might be, I don't know if it's like too much because I don't want to keep counting every time. And again, you don't need these commands. I'm just refining it here and you can see how I'm refining the system. So you can also try refining on your side if something is missing or whatever. There you go. So that's about it. So we got six, six steps. Our interaction, our core elements of our interaction are taken care of. We have identified the steps. Let's check that off. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Now this is where your ideation component comes in. Where are we going? We have put the uh, put the steps into a Figma file. Right. So this is what you're doing is you're literally taking all of this and you're adding the stuff into your Figma file. So in the Figma file, imagine that you have six steps, the same stuff, and then you're basically under each of the steps, you are adding your comments. Okay. So let's go back to the presentation. Oh, sorry, to the chat GPT. Okay. Now let's do the description. Okay, this is the next command. So where you're saying, okay, what are all the use cases? What are the design challenges? What are the design opportunities? Okay, and interestingly enough, when you when, when you look at this, this like literally shaves off weeks of work for a designer because you're literally, this has been done in minutes. So same command, copied and pasted, you guys can access it. Let's go ahead, enter.
So now you're basically saying, okay, so what is the customer goal at each of those pages? Okay. And you're saying, well, what are the opportunities, right? So what are the opportunities and what are the problems? So there you go. Right. Now let's scroll up. So you can see now very, very simple homepage. The customer wants to explore the website and discover new products. Good. Design challenges, it, is, it has to be visually appealing and in, engaging to encourage customers to stay. Right. So design opportunity, you start showcasing feature products. Okay. So you can always ask it, give me more design opportunities for the homepage. Okay. And it will give you more design opportunities. But the biggest challenge that you will see is not the design opportunity, the design challenges may not be correlated. Okay. Or sometimes because the AI does not have enough information, it may give you general advice, make things more appealing. You don't know what it, what is, what it is to make appealing, right? So you might want to ask a follow-up question. What is the definition of how do you make things more appealing? Okay. So you may want to ask those questions, but for now I would say, okay, this is reasonably in the same spot. I'm okay with this. Okay. So are you guys okay with this step? Have you reached this step? Awesome. So now what you're doing is you're literally taking these and you're putting that back into your Figma file. You're adding that information there. Okay. So you're putting your design challenges and your design opportunities underneath it for each of the pages. Okay. And make sure you read it, make sure it makes sense. Now let's go back to chat GPT. Yeah, let's uh, select this stuff. Now, this is the part where you're looking at errors. <coughs> now, this is the one step that most designers ignore because they don't think through what the errors are likely to be. Now, you can have chat GPT identify all possible or a lot of the errors, not all possible, but a lot of the errors. Let's go to the chat GPT again. Yep. Yeah. And type in your next command. Okay. So, which is you're basically saying, what is the error case? What is the design challenge in that error case? What is the design opportunity in that error case? And again, when you're looking at design challenges and design opportunities, this is for you to ideate. Okay, for this error, how would I handle it? So, Chat GPT may give you some solutions that might work, or you will have to create a new solution. But at least you are not creating all the solutions. Okay, so go ahead and hit enter. So now it's identifying all these, a page takes too long to end, uh, load, right? Poor of website design, right? Makes it difficult for people to navigate, right? Simple stuff. Okay. And you can see like, yeah, you know, even if my payment is declined, well, what do you do? Check it, you know, so now you notice if the payment is declined, what do you do? Right. There is no ideation for you. There is no design opportunity. There is no design problem there. Right. So this is where you are looking at, oh yeah, I know that the payment is declined. What will you do? So you can put, put the data in, into that step. Okay. So this is some place where chat GPT did not work out for us now, but is everybody on the same page as, as this? Have you all tried this command? Awesome. Okay. So what I would also say is when you get these commands, copy and paste the same commands for yourself as well, so that you have a history of these commands and then you can try it for any problem tomorrow. You can keep practicing it. So the problem statement that you've defined for yourself, Run the same commands for your problem statement. That is what is your homework. Okay. So make sure you copy and paste all of these commands somewhere. Okay. Now we've identified the errors. Let's go back to our sheet. Yep. Now this is where you are putting all your errors. You're identifying error one, error two, error three, and then you are listing what the errors are. And again, this document becomes the guide document for every engineer because now they're going to look at, oh yeah. If this error happens, I need to handle it this way. If this error, so you're documenting a very, very strong doc, you know, uh, workflow. So the engineers have no ambiguity in terms of what should I do? What should I not do? Okay. So now you're listing out all your errors here. Cool. Go ahead, Ajay. You have a question? 
No, you don't. Okay, cool. So this is how eventually when you do everything and you're systematically verifying and doing all that, you know, all that initial work, you go back to the uh, document, please. So the, uh, no, so go back to, yeah, PowerPoint. Yeah. So this is how you are populating everything. Now, my question to you is, do all of you feel capable of doing a job like this? Raise your hand or just say yes. Go ahead, Simran. Um, so I have a doubt. So hmm. this all makes sense for very generic problem statements, but let's say something is very specific to um, like, like a, like, what do I say? Like, let's say the Zoom team is trying to do something new and that only they, only the designers or the PMs in that organization know the context of what they're doing. So in a situation like that, where the context is a very important part, how do you educate chat GPT to give us results like this? See, I think the kinds of problems are all same. Okay. They're more or less consistent, no matter what, what industry you go to. It's just that, you know, you may not have implemented in Zoom, right? But there are probably <laughs> analogs in a lot of other industries. Okay. Okay. So I would say, you know, challenge us, right? So give us a problem statement that you think is very hard and then let's try it out. No, I'm, I'm thinking from my organization, there's a particular feature that we are building because of this either customer requirement or this feature it would be a, a delight to have, et cetera, et cetera. So mm -hmm. that feature is very specific to the, let's say the email experience of like in my company's uh, email service okay so let's in say you know, i'm just going to think up one of the features of the top of my head it's like hey i'm going to integrate ai that allows you to auto reply to that email okay yeah let's say that is that is a feature because that's in google no auto replying to an email is a very is a very generic thing but let's say if it's going to be uh how do you um okay so I just bring up my company. So with Zoho, we no, have no, product. No, you're on live on YouTube. You don't want to share confidential stuff. No, it's not confidential. I'm just saying from product okay. A to product B, there's an integration that happens. And okay. uh, with this integration, there's a particular solution that we have to bring about that makes this integration okay. seamless. So now okay. something that, that would require like a certain amount of knowledge about product A, certain amount of knowledge about product B, and then the user base of this, but it's like a business uh, use case. And like, you know, you have so much context for that and then come up with a solution. So something that is very in-depth like that. Yeah, see, that's a really good point, right? So yeah. what you're saying is, what do I do with the details of how, how things get implemented, right? The end of the day, you you still have to deal with the details, right? You have to simplify the details, okay. all right? The from what I understand with chat GPT, we've tried giving a lot of details and the more details you get, you lose like, you know, the, the system kind of goes, goes crazy a little bit. So the simpler way is this is a framework for ideation, right? So remember, we always say it's ideation, right? Yeah. Once you develop this framework, the details you are ideating and you're filling in the details, right? Okay. This okay. itself is not a comprehensive one, but this is a good starting point for you to do other stuff. So this sort of reduces about 30, 40% of my load. Exactly. And that's the point, right? Okay. That's it. It is not, and again, we are always saying ideate workflows, ideate wireframes. It is not to create and submit workflows and wireframes. Never do that. Because if you do that, then you're, and you're not thought about the details that are unique to your situation, it's not going to work. Got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So awesome. So everybody okay with this? I think... Uh, Yes, good. So for those of you that, you know, your homework is going to be that the problem statement you define, that is what you're going to apply and you're going to do the workflows for your problem statement. Okay, that is going to be your challenge number two today. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, so everybody clear with workflows? One person, yes, yes, okay. Okay, so all right. So now the third thing that we're going to do today is we are going to do wireframes. 
Okay. And again, this is this is pretty much all of what an interaction designer does, right? So you're looking at the workflows, the wireframes, the design briefs. These are all pretty much interaction design kind of roles. And this is 40% of the work that is going to be done. Okay. So uh, as a 40 to 50% as Simran has mentioned. So now let's go on to the wireframes. So what is a wireframe? Right. The wireframe is simply like a grayscale document where you're identifying all the core elements of the page. Okay. You don't put the colors in because once you put the colors in, we get lost in the colors, right? So wireframe is purely to look at how something works. You're looking at the functionality. Okay. So you're looking at what are all the different modules that are going to be there? How are these modules going to play together? What type of content is going to be put in there? How will the interface work? Where will you click? Where will you engage with different stuff? And so those are the kinds of decisions that you're making at a wireframe level. It doesn't have to be visually appealing. It's just black and white colors that you can do this on. Okay. Everybody clear with the concept of a wireframe? Yes. Awesome. Cool. Now let's see how we can generate this. Okay. So. If you are designing a wireframe for a product page, what tools will you use? Anybody? Simran is laughing because it's like, I know the answer, but it's like pen and paper. Okay. Dali. Awesome. So the thing that you want to do before you do the wireframe. Okay. Let's go back go back to the previous slide. Okay. When you do the wireframe, what you're trying to do, right? The first step is you're trying to identify what are all the modules that need to be there. Correct. That's not something that Dali will do. Okay. That's chat GPT. Okay. It's kind of trying to figure out what are the modules that will go. Then the second thing is within those modules, what are the sub elements that are going to be there? What are the key design patterns that I need to implement? What are my buttons? What are my call to actions? So these are the things you need to decide before you start getting to pen to paper, right? So that is the first step that we need to take care of. So now let's go to the demo. Okay. So once you get all of this, then you basically go to mid journey or Dali or whatever and say, visualize it. Now Dali have been consistently disappointed with, uh, hopefully they'll kind of make it better. And, but for now, let's basically think about it. Define the page goals and the context. What is the goal of the page? Because if you start thinking the modules, what's going to happen? You get excited by the modules, but you forget what your goals were in your workflow, isn't it? So you're defining the page goals and the context for that specific page. Okay. Then you're identifying the various sections. And then for each of the sections, you're identifying what are the design challenges? What are the opportunities and what patterns am I going to use? Okay. Then for, yeah, that's true. Both of them are same, but it's weird. Yeah. So for each of the design patterns, you're defining the content, the behavior, the functionality and the navigation. That's what you're doing. Okay. Very, very systematic. Now let's basically get into chat GPT and start doing all of this. Okay. So notice we are not going to a new tab here. We are going to be in the same tab. Can anybody tell me why? Why are we on the same tab? Go ahead, Achyut. Yeah, so basically in ChatGPT, how each tab functions is, uh, you know, it keeps a track of uh, everything that we have done previously and the responses are in line with that. So anytime we would like to uh, give a, I mean, do a new task, we need to go for a new window because the context is entirely different and all what we are working is entirely different. We want fresh output independent right. of what we have done before. Okay. So then why am I not changing it? Uh, okay. I'm sorry. You asked why are we not changing? Uh -huh. Yeah, probably because we wanted to, you know, keep a track of what all we have done and the output has to be. In so you want to keep the same context. Okay. Yeah, the context because has to be. Every the screen, screen every, every step is a screen. And yes. so the problem statements that you've identified have to be consistent. Yeah. Okay. If you create brand new problem statements, chat GPT will forget. Exactly. Right. So that's it. So now let's go to the next query. Okay. 
So what you are doing now is you are taking one of the steps. Okay. Take the product details page and define a user goal, business goal, and appropriate user metrics. What are the design challenges and design opportunities? And please uh, provide all of all the above in a tabular format. Right? Okay. Let's go. This is the command. So who's pasting? Is Hoy pasting or is Rajiv pasting? Yes, I'm going to do it now. Okay. Okay. So understand we asked for user experience metric. This is GPT 3.5. So chat GPT is running on 3.5. We can change it to four, but uh, generally in four, I see there's a lot more variability. So for tasks like these, I think 3.5 is good enough. Okay. So we got for one page, we basically got this information okay and notice i asked for user experience metrics can you tell me why anybody tell me why we asked for user experience metrics for that page because when you're designing a page you need to understand well what is my success metric how do i know i'm successful isn't it? So when you look at those success metrics, you know, okay, I need to evaluate the whole page on the foundations of the success metrics. So when you look at the user experience metrics, like, okay, time spent on page, if I'm looking at a product page, if people spend more time, is that good or bad? And this is a completely different topic, which is looking at metrics and evaluating them and all that. But when you look at it, it's like, yeah, if somebody spends 10 minutes reading a, a product page, is that good or bad? Well, what is the goal of a product page, right? The goal of the product page is to help you make a buy decision as quickly as possible. Okay. So the more amount of time you spend, the worse it is. Okay. So what are the number of interactions on a page? Well, the more interactions you have, that's the more amount of time, right? So ideally you want to make a decision very quickly. Okay. This is the product I want, or this is not the product I want. Okay. That's the first thing you want. Then the second thing that you're saying is the number of interactions on the page. So you're basically saying, okay, how many times are people scrolling and kicking? So it basically tells me how engaged they are with the overall content. So that tells me if people are scrolling too much, it tells me that there is some information that is missing that people want on the top. Right. So ideally you want most of the decisions done with minimum, minimum scrolling. And then you have a small group of people that will scroll to look for other content. Okay. So this is where we are. Everybody got this is, has everybody done the same command on your screen? Done. Cool. All right. Now let's go to the workflow. And then we said, okay, now do we design the page goal? So what you're going to do literally is for each of the steps, okay? The command that you will give when we give given a command for only one of the pages, but for each of the steps, list the following in a tabular format. That's what you're doing, okay? Now let's go to identifying the various sections in the page. So we are going to look at this product page and we're going to say, show me the various sections, okay? Describe the page in detail with various sections with appropriate UX design patterns at, at the atomic level design challenges and design opportunities presented to me in a tabular format and all the columns are listed. Okay. This is the product page. There you go. So now you're seeing the design patterns kind of being listed out there. You see that? So let's go paste this command for everybody. So you can try it as well. And again, notice that all of these are fixed commands. There's nothing you have to do to modify. Just paste it in a document, copy and paste, just do copy and paste and you'll get what you want.
Yeah, so that's fine. If the experience matrix is out of the table, you can ask it to make sure that the experience matrix is inside the table. That's what it is. So, yep. Okay, everybody clear with this? You've got the same output? Nearly. Okay, so you've got some variability. That's okay. Right. Now, what you're going to do is you're just going to look at it and you're going to eyeball it and say, does this make sense or not? Are there other ideas that I want to add into it? Are there things that I want to take out of it? So those are the decisions that you're making and you're clarifying this part of the document. Okay. So, but at this point, you kind of taken care of the next step. So let's go back to the uh, sheet. Okay. So we've identified the various sections and we've identified the design challenges and the opportunities in the patterns. We've identified all of that. Okay. Now the last step is we need to identify the content. All right. Let's go to the next command. There you go. So you're basically saying describe the content functionality and then give me the rest of the information. Column two, column three, column four, you're defined. Okay, let's go hit enter. And the column man. <laughs> Okay, so you're probably some of some are getting rate limit. Can you tell me a little bit more, Achyut? Yeah, it's like uh, probably it is very uh, the message is very ambiguous. I'm not able to understand it's so in a very coded format. But typically mm -hmm. in the between it says that uh, reach limit for GPT five has been crossed. Please try three seconds later, something like that, and that keeps repeating. Oh, okay, I think it probably could be that you've entered too many commands in a short period of time. Right. So yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. okay. So are the commands still generating. Can you go down and see, Rajiv? So the page is uh, not responsive. Okay. So it's still waiting. And by the way, ours is a paid account, so we hopefully will not have uh, that much delay the speed shows it actually <laughs> yeah see that's also a visual cue isn't it so visually you know you you see the slow typing and the versus the fast typing there's a visual cue there yeah the cursor blinking actually like... mm. So Rajiv, do you have another tab open with the alternative with the, something that's already been preloaded? So uh, the whole chat GPT is only uh, not targeting. Okay. So... All right. Let's go back to the other tab. So is it the same for everybody else? It's frozen. Is it working for somebody? No, it has been frozen for me. Okay.
All right. So we do not have another tab that is uh, that is demonstrating stuff that you've done previously. Is that correct, Rajiv? Yeah, it's not showing that one either. Okay. So I would say let's go back to the command. Okay, so essentially what you're going to do is for each of the design patterns, right? You are going to get content, the functionality and the behavior and how it's going to navigate for each of those elements. That's what you would get. Okay, now once this is done, can you just click on regenerate response? I'm curious if that will work. Click down. Okay, so once this this comes out for each of the guys you'll get some kind of content all right then let's go to the next command let's assume that it's going to get the job done magically and then once you're done using all of this data you're basically going to create a prompt a mid-journey prompt okay yeah so i think it's uh it just chat gpt just froze on all of us so i would say that's fine let's not worry about it but using this, yeah, so I think, okay, so you're getting an error there. So, okay, you got it. So Praneet is working. Can you share your screen, Praneet? So everybody else can see it as well. There you go. Okay. So now you're basically getting shows the hierarchical hierarchical path of the thing. You know, you, you understand breadcrumbs and all that navigation is clickable links. But again, this is where you have to say, okay, the clickable click, you know, the clickable links are defined by you. You have to verify to what it is clicking to and all that stuff. You need to define the breadcrumb pattern as well. Okay. Then you're looking at the product gallery image. And so you're basically saying, okay, so you, you need to be able to click and swipe. So those are the actions that you need to think about, the product description, all that stuff. It's very clear for you. Okay. Is okay, awesome. So Naveed Kumar. So I, I guess the system is basically kicking back in. So that's good. Okay. Now you're basically talking about social proof badges. So what is a social proof badge in a e-commerce website? You're talking stars, ratings, and reviews, and those kinds of things, right? So that's where the trust badges and the all those things come in. You can also say supported by Visa or whatever, you know, verified by Visa and all that. So you get all that. Okay. So now you basically got all your product page widgets as well as the description as well as the content. Okay. Now let's go back. So you can stop sharing. Thanks, Praneet. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we are literally going to go into mid journey and create a comment command. So can you show the command that you did in mid journey, Rajiv? And again, don't worry about mid journey, mid journey, we will focus on tomorrow. Okay. So basically here it is wireframe of an e-commerce product page that has the following sections, headphone image, headphone title description, blah, blah, blah. And so you, he's basically put in some hero image. He's decided that I'm selling headphones. Okay. And then you're saying, I want add to cart ratings, reviews, related products. This is just from the previous table that you got. Okay. Once you have all of this, then you're basically putting it into your, uh, you know, mid journey. And then that is the output we got. So can we go back to the screen? Yeah. There you go. So you now you have wireframes for all of this stuff. Right now, if you look at the, you know, the, the right hand side guy, that's actually does not look like a website. Uh, probably the, the top uh, left hand corner is the one that is closest to a website. Right now you could probably work with mid journey a little bit more and refine it and have it create some more interesting stuff. Or you can say, I want filters on the left and all that stuff. And you could get to it. But again, don't worry about mid journey right now. We'll do all of that tomorrow. Mid journey tomorrow is mid journey day. Okay, cool. So that's it. So this is how you generate your wireframes. Any questions, thoughts? Let's let's stop sharing and let's talk. Questions, thoughts, comments, concerns. Yeah, go ahead, Praneet. Uh, so 
sir, actually, it's not a question. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, Simran also had some. So, uh, so earlier Simran asked about certain, you know, some specific topics which they are discussing, and maybe uh, ChatGPT is not uh, having that. Uh, so, I just came across one platform which is Chat uh, PDF. So, it uses ChatGPT to summarize certain PDFs. So, usually, when we have some kind of a product brief or uh, maybe some kind of a documentation with that product. Maybe we can feed in, into that particular uh, platform and make it according. Can you type it in? What is the name of that uh, link? Uh, can you just type yeah, it in yeah. here? I'll just copy paste it. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, we can check it out. Okay, chat PDF. Okay. So what does chat PDF do? It so, kind of summarizes all the PDF. Uh, oh, okay, so and... you can upload a, a PDF document. It will summarize it for you. Uh, yeah, and we can kind of ask questions around it. So it will uh, use chat to answer <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, right? You don't have to read your textbook anymore. You don't even have to buy it. I mean, when we were kids, we were we used to have guides. So it's like somebody would uh, have a huge books. I don't know if you guys have guides still, but we used to have these thin, thin guides. So now you don't even need a guide. Chat PDF has made that industry redundant. That's cool. Thanks, Praneet. But I think the challenge that uh, Simran was asking was something about, it wasn't about the volume of data. I think his question was that there are so many details that are unique to my industry that I don't know whether the system would be able to understand all those or extrapolate for all of those. That's what Simran's point was. Is that uh, right, Simran? Yes. Yeah. So actually, sir, what I was thinking, why, uh, maybe like if we have a PDF of those understandings, maybe obviously uh, all uh, all of us, uh, you know, working on some product, we'll have some kind of a product understanding uh, document with us. So if we are going mm -hmm. to upload it into the system and it kind of generates uh, certain points, which we can use uh, in the format that right. we have just practiced on chat GPT, right. maybe that will right. give us some kind of a help, at least uh, not completely, but it might actually help. So, yeah, so there is, with the in the absence of, uh, you know, and I completely agree with you, Praneet, but I, unfortunately, unfortunately, in Simran's case, we can't discuss the smaller details on pub, in yeah. a public forum. So that's why and we also can't if you do that, what we're going to be able to do. And if you do that, uh, uploading PDF legal team will be right behind you in like lawsuits <laughs> and such. So another because thing again, you know, to... imagine that's yeah. a great way to collect ebooks from everybody. <laughs> Isn't it? That's a great way for like if Adobe actually purchased that company or like let's say Pearson or some company purchased that that website. Now imagine I can track everybody that's plagiarizing my information. Right. So there are lots of interesting implications in that. You know. So okay, go ahead, Simran. Um, Prasad, the, the prompts over here was really good and well thought out. I'm trying to understand how do you create a structure to even write a prompt? Because um, if I interact with chat GPT, there's going to be a nine and 10 chances I'm going to make a stupid prompt and it'll take me a while to even understand the syntax. So if I type, right. start typing dumb prompts, then my results eventually are going to become really bad. So could you give us right. a suggestion as to how do you structure a prompt that has got, like the res the prompts that you've given have got like a very nice uh, structure and good syntax. So uh, I want to get a get an insight about that. See, I think what we've, it's been through a lot of trial and error, right? Not just our trial and error, it's the R&D team has been trying and doing a lot of these experiments, right? So we've been building up on a lot of knowledge that we've all contributed together, mm. right? So... What we have realized at the end is we've tried many different combinations that you may not even be aware of. So, for example, in one of the combinations, we tried to create a, a, a specific thread that specialized only in doing wireframes. Okay? okay. Because if you notice, most of our commands are constant. The only thing that changed was the domain. Mm -hmm. So, we said, okay, how do we do that? And so, when we started giving those commands, we basically taught it. This is how you do a wireframe. This is the set series of questions you will ask. This is what will happen. This is how you'll answer. So, we taught the system everything. And then we gave the transcript. And then finally, it basically started assuming all kinds of stuff. Right? Okay. And we don't know at what question it made a mistake. 
Right. So we ended up going back and we said, okay, forget all of this. We are going to give it step by step by step. So the whole framework of like, take a big problem, break it into smaller chunks. And then for each of the smaller chunks, you get your output and the output format is also standardized. These are the columns I want. This is the rows I want. It's all basically clear. So it is designed for two things, right? First thing is for clarity. So you can verify it very, very quickly and very, very easily. Okay. The second thing, that's why we ask for it in a tabular format. The second thing that it is designed is if there is a mistake, okay, you know exactly what command made the mistake and what the syntax was, what we made a mistake there. Okay. okay. So when you start thinking about that, then you know how to fix it. You know how to identify it and you know how to fix it. And that's what the whole idea was. And also with chat GPT, what is interesting is it does not do good when you give it a whole lot of stuff. Maybe there's the memory limitations or whatever it is. It doesn't do good when you give it a whole lot of stuff in the beginning and say, now do it again and again, right? So that's why you have to keep giving it in smaller steps. So even chat GPT understands the context and builds on the context. Because I think it's a programmatic uh, thing. It's a, it's an implementation the way they've implemented it. I don't think it's the, the tool is bad. It's the way they've implemented it. Maybe it only takes care of the last five commands or something like that. And so you want to make sure that's why you have to give it in small, small pieces. So it remembers what the last five commands were. Did you by any chance ask chat GPT to help you write prompts? Did that work? Um, I wish we tried that. We didn't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do that yeah. today so, but we did ask chat GPT to write uh, uh, prompts for mid journey. Yeah. It didn't work out really well. Then we also tried to give chat GPT. We said, this is the syntax. Now generate the prompt. That also didn't work out really well. So that's why we have to, and again, that's where it's a language translation issues between different tools. So that's why we have to think about every tool and understand the strengths and weaknesses and translate it accordingly. Got it, got it. Yeah. So okay. it's also like a lot of reading the documentation for that tool. So we've spent time reading the documentation. What are the commands? What work? What don't work? What are the implementation? Oh. How was it done? So we spent a lot of time doing that. Okay, awesome, awesome. Right, thank Good. you. Thanks, Sivran. Any other questions, guys? Go ahead, Achyut. Yeah, sir, I was actually about to ask for this one because uh, these two systems are working on a kind of a different language kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So like these documentation are present on the websites itself? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. I just wanted And to... so what you're basically doing is you're reading up on the documentation in terms of like, what is the command prompt? What are the limitations? What are the, you know, so how has it been implemented? So there's like, you know, you will see it in Quora somewhere or the other, somebody or the other would have, would have thought about it, right? So you are just basically going out. If they, I mean, mid journey clearly has a documentation section. Chat journey, uh, chat GPT is kind of, on and off. So that's where you have to do a lot of other research because other people are trying it and trying to jailbreak it and figure out what's going on. So you're reading all that and you're trying to imagine what is the architecture that it's been built on. And you're trying to visualize that and you're saying if that is the architecture, then what commands will work? Yeah. And so I mean, just, just to give you a little bit of background, um, I'm a software guy and a designer. So my software skills basically help me and I've worked pretty much most of my career with machine learning systems, yeah. right? And so this comes very naturally to me. It's a very easy skill for me. Yeah, that's what I was getting confused. So I started learning NLP. So I could understand, you know, probably I'll be able to craft my prompts in a much better manner. I right. No, you don't have to do that. I think there are going to be tools that are going to simplify it for you. Okay. okay? Okay. And uh, I don't think, I mean, even if you look at the commands, these commands are standard, right? So, I mean, we will give you all of these standards. In fact, one of the ideas that we are playing with is, okay, you know, let's actually have a mailing list of people who are interested in tools. And then let's, let's, the latest tools will share it out with you guys and you can give us your feedback and your reviews and say this worked, didn't, didn't work. And that way we can very quickly build a huge repository of tools for our members. Sure, sure, sir. Good. Thanks, Thank Achyut. Yeah, there's one more uh, thing, sir. Not a doubt, yeah. but actually, uh, ChatGPT has logged me out saying uh, server is busy kind of a thing. Huh. So is that okay? Actually, uh, from an article I learned about temperature value, is that okay if I can post it here? And I, I would like to uh, post that difference document, but just in mm. case if the server is not allowing me to log in, somebody else can, you know, take in and, you know, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's fine. So even if you give us the command, we will play with it and we'll see how it's going. Yeah. So I'm very curious because if the if, if it says set temperature to zero, then I think a lot of our other problems will get solved. I'll do that right away. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Achyut. All right. So if there are no more questions, I think yeah, Mukesh, you have one more question, and then we can call it a day. Go ahead, Mukesh. Oh, uh, I have something to add with Achyut. Uh, so the prompt is something like you can just say that set the AI temperature to 0 0.2 or 0.7 and then give the prompt and it is generating. Okay, cool. Awesome. So that's the only command, is it? So we can definitely try yeah. that command and see how it plays out. Yeah, the command is very simple, actually. It's awesome. Cool. It's direct. So, so now quick question for everybody is... How comfortable are you on a scale of one to five? Five being super comfortable that I can get this work done or, uh, you know, one being not at all comfortable. Just type it in so I know exactly where we are at this point. The thing is, sir, actually we had to, you know, kind of, I don't know, it's my personal thing if everybody had it or not. We had to rush up with copying the prompts, pasting it. We probably didn't get enough time to actually read the responses and, you know, it's like juggling. I get it. Things. I totally get it. And I think that's where, that's your homework. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. That is going to be your homework. Awesome. So as long as you're twos, threes, that's great. So it makes me feel good. So I would just say, let's give all of ourselves a clap. You know, let's clap for ourselves because you guys have all done like a, you know, hung out with me, kind of handle this, even though it was going really super fast. But now let's, do we, are we, do we have any more slides or are we done? Uh, there are two, two, three. Okay, two more slides. Let's quickly go into those two more slides and then we can send everybody home. So this, okay. uh, this slide is, I'll just talk about it for a couple of minutes and then again. So this open... is for the folks on YouTube. Yes, these, uh, this is for uh, everyone on YouTube and on our uh, WhatsApp group, whoever are watching on YouTube right now. So if you haven't already, if you like the learning, please join us and uh, do take the college membership for 12 months. And you have a special deal right now if you go to the link that will be shared with you in some time. Um, uh, so with this uh, particular membership, you get to attend monthly workshops, then uh, you would uh, be attending weekly meetups, then you have uh, exclusive volunteering opportunities to accelerate your growth, and there are many more exclusive benefits. So please uh, do sign up. Over to you. Awesome. awesome. So thank you very much. Do we have a slide on the homework, the challenge? Yes. yes. Okay. So tomorrow we are going to start thinking about the fidelities, the wireframes, as well as the um, uh, the high fidelity images. Okay. So for this, what you need is make sure you have mid journey, make sure you have credits on that. So there's three, two or three tools that you need to have mid journey. If you're out of credits on mid journey, then Lexica is another one. And there's blue willow. There are three tools that are available. So I would say okay, first join our Discord channel and then from there, you know, join the Discord channel for, um, you know, Blue Willow as well as Mid Journey so that you have access to it. Do not type any commands in there because it's, you know, at some point your credits will get done and then you will not be able to do any more. So don't type anything. We will practice all that tomorrow. Okay. Cool. So uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay. This yeah, so we're going to be looking at solving problems like a rock star. So how do you solve design problems? That's, that's the up, upcoming workshop for April. And then we're going to talk about how to get promoted because a lot of people kind of come in. This is the promotion season. And in April, generally, sabki, you know, everybody is either super happy or super sad. I got promoted, didn't get promoted. So this is a good time to discuss how do you get promoted. And then the last one on June, we're going to talk about how do you design UX artifacts quickly. So we're going to be talking about techniques and tricks to do that. Okay. Now, if you guys are interested in the R&D, you guys want to volunteer in the R&D, and again, it takes time, right? You're going to have to commit time. So if you have the time and you're willing to put in the time and you're willing to put in the hard work, do reach out to Rajiv. 
and then we you can be part of the R&D team where you're researching a specific topic and helping us get to that stage. And by the way, along the way, you also get really good at that topic. Okay. So, and I work with all the R&D teams that are in there. I usually meet once a week and give feedback and talk about all that stuff. So anyways, so the challenge for day two, this is what your challenge is for today. Okay. Generate your design brief from the transcript. Okay. So you've got, uh, you've already done that. That is taken care of. Okay. Now the second thing is create a workflow and not for a booking experience for the problem statement that you've identified. Okay. Rajiv, can you modify that? So create yes, a workflow for the problem statement that you've identified. Okay. And the scenario you identify two scenarios of your or one scenario of your choice. Okay. And show me what that workflow looks like. Right. And then ideate on the wireframe for the for for one particular screen. Okay. And then take pictures of your exploration and send it across. So you can either use pen and paper, you don't have to use mid-journey. Based on that, you can just sketch out some ideas based on what chat JPT has given you. Or if you feel confident and comfortable, see if you can generate the wireframe in mid-journey. Okay. Everybody clear with this? Deadline is 5 p.m. IST tomorrow. All right. Questions, thoughts before we end the day? Awesome. Have fun, guys. Have a great night. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.